What up, y'all, and welcome back to the channel, Dap Universal. I'm Dap. So, coming back at you with another pick a card reading, and today, yes, today, we're doing a collaboration. <laughs> a collaboration with, this is one of my favorites, Scarlet Serpent. So, um, it's another male YouTube um, tarot reader on uh, the site that um, definitely takes you there very deep. Um, I love his reason. I, I, I think I stumbled, stumbled across his channel like quite randomly. Um, and it was probably because of a topic that he was go going over. He has some very interesting topics or very different topics that you normally don't just see every other tarot, tarot reader doing. Um, so uh, I feel like his, his readings are so genuine because like you can definitely tell it's, it's coming from a place of wanting to um, or feeling called to put a certain type of reading out and not backing down from it. And that takes a lot of courage because like even on my channel, I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I want to go too different, you know, but like, or, you know, but he's not afraid to take you there <laughs> and whatever he feels in the moment. And I also love that we did this collaboration because um, our personalities are so kind of different. Um, I feel like they're yin and yang. Like, I, I love his personality, but um we're very different ways of uh, expressing, um, I guess, ourselves on camera. And just in general, like, I'm kind of loud and annoying, maybe a little goofy. He's like, none of that. <laughs> he actually gives off this ASMR type vibes. Like, it's very, it's very, like, soothing. I, it's very soothing. Um, I, I may comfort people, but I don't think that anyone would necessarily describe me or my personality as soothing. Because so I, I could literally play one of his playlists and just, like, sleep like a baby like just i mean not because of what he's saying just because his voice is so nice but um yeah definitely go over there or go to that link um in the description or uh in the cards and you're gonna definitely go over there to uh, scarlet serpent's channel you're gonna subscribe to his channel and then you're going to uh make sure to pick another pile because uh he's doing what are what is, what are people's um first impressions of you i'm doing what are the lasting impressions of you. So, um, yeah, it doesn't matter which which video you watch first or what you know. It, it's not a part one or part two. It doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that you pick a pile. So, how about this? Just to keep it simple, you're gonna choose pile number one, which is this one. Pile number two, which is this two, or pile number three, which is um. Well, damn it, y'all behind me and then you may have to go ahead and choose to, okay so yes i do know that there are two pile number threes um there are two pile number threes um the reason for that i don't know just pick one of those it's like pick a pile within the pile i don't know i don't tell you just do that fuck it we're not perfect sound up the comments and um yeah pause it if you need to um subscribe to us we um yeah we had a lot of fun doing this i hope we hope we do it again one day but um yeah i'll see you at your reading bye Hello, and if you chose Pile 1, uh, this is going to be your reading on what are people's lasting impressions of you. And before I get into this reading, I just wanted to thank Dap for not only inviting me um, in this collaboration and, and on his channel, but also for the idea of the reading. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here. It really is. And so yeah, I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, I have two Oracle cards, and then I'm going to... Um, shuffle the tarot just so we can dig a little bit deeper but um straight away uh, well i'll just show these cards to you we have archangel ad and tiger's eye with tiger spirit rises and these are the lasting impressions of you and then we have rise above so straight away um a connection between the rising aspect that um, and we'll see a little bit um, later specifically what this means and of course because this is part of the collaboration um, the other part of the reading is the first impressions so I'll leave a comment on this video just 
just to share how these connect because i always find those very interesting but anyway uh, we see rising above and i'd mention that because rising above could mean a couple things the first is that you rose above the first impressions that these people had of you so um in a way you just kind of shocked them in that way but in a lot of ways i think this tiger spirit and the rise above card are just uh, your lasting impression for the most part is that you're really not ordinary in any way you don't you don't follow the rules um you don't uh adhere to societal norms and you're not interested in that and i Again, I'm, I'm just naturally curious as to what the first impressions were, because depending on what you got um, in that reading, it could be very shocking, or people kind of came close to you as a result of knowing um, either straight away or over time that you were very different. And I think that brings a sense of adventure to their lives with, with both of these, really. Uh, maybe someone who has been... Uh, programmed in in a way that's um, not conducive to growth or at the same time with tiger there's sense of adventure that you bring forth and that's lasting speaking of lasting tiger's eye is very grounding so um i'd say that you give off a very grounding energy and they feel increasingly safe with you with your presence um and that would actually help with travel in a way where uh you feel like a home to others even when you're in new places or people have just met you there's a comfort that you give off and a light that you give off too um, and I think that light that strong energy comes from you being very comfortable in who you are and that probably took some time and I think um, people remember Kind of the impact that you have on them it's like a very it's like a permanent marker <laughs> if that if that makes sense so let's take a look at the tarot and see i guess what are some of the lasting impressions and we're just going to dig a bit deeper here so i have the ace of cups and that's that's one thing there's new energy uh with rise above tiger spirit there's a uh an increase in energy and then I mentioned grounding energy that you have. This is um, very obvious with the Ten of Pentacles and Nine of Pentacles. Um, and I'll show you these cards in a sec. But um, very homey is your is your uh, lasting effect that you have is that um, you feel safe to op or they feel safe to open up to you. They feel safe to sometimes unload their problems on you. So that could be something you need to work with uh, on a regular basis, especially with um, Tiger's Eye, is um, grounding your own energy. Because um, I could imagine people would want to latch on because they feel comfortable with your presence. But Ace of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles. I think you open up new possibilities. If you s look closely, um, this painting... I don't know what the painting is, but it kind of looks like it could be the image of the Ace of Cups. If you could, if you could see it, oh, let's see the the figure in the background of the Ten of Pentacles image. Ignore my nails. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it kind of looks like the Ace of Cups. Like she's drawing inspiration. Yeah. So I think even if people only met you briefly and you had a very brief conversation with them they'll they won't necessarily remember you but you'll be imprinted in their reality based on um your ability to find hidden desires and tell people not only not only, maybe not directly but you show them that you could actually not only acknowledge that it's there but that you could pursue it and not only that, that it'll bring you the joy that comes with the Ace of Cups, but that will 
trickle out into physical manifestation of wealth and security. It's kind of like uh, you don't have to compromise one for the other, which I think a lot of people are programmed to believe that you have to work really hard um, and to let your dreams die off, essentially. And um, you, you kind of float, help people float away from the limited mentality of the way the world is for most people. Um, and you'd lead by example. I don't think it's something like um, you'd sit a friend down or someone you just met down and be like, you need to follow your dreams. Like It's, it's more of um, passive, like a passive energy, but also by what you do. And um, people want to follow you because you, you have a strong spirit, a strong soul. I mean, the Nine of Pentacles here. So, again, independent, self-sufficient, um, this person has a cat, you could be somewhat mysterious, that's a lasting impression, is that um, while you're more than willing to give a lot of your time, a lot of your energy to people, um, you also retreat and give that same space to you. Um, so this could be depending, uh, this is a general reading, of course, but depending on who, who you are and how you, and who these people are who are having these impressions of you is uh, it could be these cards could be saying to make sure you ground yourself but at the same time it also feels like uh, they notice when you're absent that you must be recharging or they might not know and I think that's part of the mystery too is uh, even though you see the tiger Sometimes it goes in the cave and just rests and retreats. And they may or may not know what that's like. I think with the pillar there, they don't. Uh, these pillars. It's like creating a space for yourself. And then we have the Nine of Cups. Yeah. You're extremely independent. That's the lasting impression people have of you. Uh, you're very confident. And... And I think the, the thing that's interesting about this being a lasting impression is that you're not fake. You don't come across as fake as someone who, especially in today's world, needs to show that they're confident, needs to make a post that tells, I don't, I don't know, whatever people tend to post of nowadays. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, this is not an illusion. You, you come across as very authentic. Uh, very respectable and someone who has a lot of wisdom just based on your own understanding of self and I think you come into the lives of people who might be codependent codependent um, people who are in need of seeing how they can uh, really create a home within themselves for any situation that they could always retreat within like just their own confidence their own self-confidence i'm just getting that with all these figures who are alone in the cards two nines uh and the rise above card so Yeah, I think I'm going to end the reading there. I don't want to, because I could easily drag it out for too long. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this reading. Um, don't forget to, if you're visiting from my channel, to like, subscribe to DAP. And um, also check out the part of the collaboration that's on my uh, page, Scarlet Serpent Readings. So you can just see how these compare and kind of let us know. Um, how the readings interact because that's always interesting but um, take care and I hope to see you in a future reading what up pal number two and uh, welcome to your reading we're looking into um, what is what's the lasting impression that people have on you so after they've gotten to know you for a while whether or not you um, stay in the, these people's energies or um, you part ways 
this is just getting a look at how do you affect people long term like how do you what lessons do you normally bring people and you know i understand that um when we talk about soulmates and we talk about um meeting people and um you know healing yourself or growing um self-discovery through other people in those relationships um I'm not saying that every one of those have the, they have the same lesson. I'm saying what energy do you bring people? Um, what conclusion do you do you bring people to the most? You know, because we have that that thing about us, um, <laughs> and I feel like there's a story there. But I want to start off by saying you may be heavy earth energy. Um, you may be heavy earth energy. I do see the king and the queen of pentacles. They come out um, in in your pile, but. The king is in reverse. So, this gives me vibes of like maybe you at odds with yourself between that king of pentacles energy in reverse, which is basically, um, say, it can be greed or like, not greed, but all consumed in the material or all consumed in, say, um, earthly pleasures and caring a little bit less about say spirituality or emotional concepts but on the flip side um you can do the same thing with the queen of pentacles where it's like you may be too giving or too nurturing in your normally resources um to the point where it's not practical so this is push and pull with you for some reason between um over giving and then coming across as being just stingy like <laughs> well i'm sorry i asked but um, I think you get to that point once you like really just had it with the fact that, look, I haven't been used and abused too many times. Y'all got me. I'm not doing, I don't feel like it today. Leave me alone. It's like, it gives me that vibes. It's like, it, it only becomes bitter after it's been like taken advantage of over and over again. So y'all may be actually, um, y'all may be actually like, say, starting over or like, say you may have had to start over a couple times. If, like this is your past. So I feel like this is really specific energy of, of like someone having to reinvent themselves, um, someone having to um, say meet a whole new group of people, see how that's gonna work out for them, see if they can, see who they attract. It's like um, moving from a place where you're really comfortable into um, say this foreign environment. It's foreign environment, and you and I think you thrive. So you may have so you may have left like say old high school friends like longtime friends and maybe move somewhere else like maybe move to a different state and had to start over or gotten married or whatever um and had to um you know actually meet new people because i know when uh ever I, I can speak for myself um living in a small town and having the same friends that i would had since like middle school you don't really feel the need so much to like put yourself out there and be social with you know different types of people it's like yeah it happens but it's like i I never felt just urged to because I had, you know, a bunch of people I could hang out with it, you know, at any given time. So it's like, I feel like maybe you went through this period of um, asking yourself, am I who I am because I chose this or this is really how I am or am I, or am I just what everyone expects of me? Because, you know, it's hard to tell. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Um, and I'm saying all this because you have number 55. You do have the adventure card with relationships as the life lesson of um, how you affect people and I guess how they affect you. Because I was I would see this as going hand in hand. Like this is what you, they give to you or what makes you uh, makes them realize about you and also what you realize about them. Um, relationships. I am attracted to those people that serve my higher good. And 55 is adventure. You may have like a lot of, um, well, first, you may actually be um, uh, life path number fives. Um, you may have been born on like, say, the 14th of the month or the 5th of the month. You could be more on the 10th of the month as well. Because um, that's really at number 10, but I'm seeing it as like an emphasis on five, though. Five is about change. So you may also be someone who doesn't like to sit in the same energy for too long. You get antsy. Um, because I do have how people, the long lasting effects you have on people is the Queen of Pentacles, and she's upright. And that's why I was like, it's not bad. It's just like, I think it overgives or it can be too involved with other people's um, comfort levels. It's like, it's almost like a feeling of, I can't be comfortable unless you're comfortable. It's like, I'm comfortable knowing that you're comfortable, you know, kind of thing. It's like, 
knowing good and well that they would not do the same thing for you. It's not about that either, but it does give me about with like, um, it, I can see how it'd be easy for, for someone uh, with no morals to take advantage of someone who's just like open hearted and just always ready to give. Always ready to give. But I don't think it stayed like this for a lot. For a lot of y'all, think I think y'all flipped the script on that ass <laughs> and then left. <laughs> Even if you didn't leave, like say, um, like say physically, like change town, like change states or whatever or, or towns, um, I feel like you may have um, left energetically. You may have cut some people the fuck off. You may have said, you know what, y'all gonna think y'all y'all gonna think I moved. <laughs> like y'all ain't gonna see me. But uh, clarify the Queen of Pentacles. We have the Eight of Wands. Yeah. With that six of pentacles. All you wanted was a little reciprocity. You didn't ask for much. You weren't you weren't needy. She's not in reverse, but the queen of pentacles is the energy of I am gonna take care of you. I'm gonna make sure that you are comfortable in this environment. But at the same time, I'm I'm very willing and open to receiving as well. I'm not asking for it, but it's like she's not she doesn't have a hard time taking um, or being or taking contributions if this is a team effort, you know? And so with the Eight of Wands, I do feel like um, things that changed really quickly, Knight of Swords, I don't know what happened because it's a general reading, but like, it gives me the feeling of somebody like saying, <sighs> making a real just abrupt decision, like maybe to cut people off or to move, or like take that job um, somewhere else and just start over. Or what, it's like for a lot of y'all, when you moved, it was all of a sudden, or you didn't tell people that you were moving, or you didn't tell people what you are doing. You just kind of like disappeared. And so, it can make people feel a little bit like, well, damn. <laughs> so um, I think they really miss your absence though. But I feel like it, it, it also makes them feel this snake energy, lasting effects you have on people. And it goes a couple of different ways. Um, so some people who are just hell bent on not wanting to see things from a higher perspective or um, forgive and like move on with their life if it was a sour situation, they still hold on to that, to that conflict by basically paying you out to be a snake paying you out to be someone who is deceptive and um just phony baloney like judge you just phony baloney like <laughs> they they tell these stories and i think they believe them i think they really do believe these stories by the way they could be a gemini or have like a lot of it's like it's someone who just yeah na, 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 just talking talking about other people themselves just talking um, this shit that don't even need to be said, but like, they, they get to run in that mouth. Um, and it is, it is a, <laughs> a, a statement to how much they do notice your energy not being there if, if y'all don't talk anymore, right? So it's like, you know, if we're not self-aware, we're talking about someone who may not be as self-aware, if you are going on and on and on and on and on about this person that you don't talk to and haven't talked to in maybe even years, <laughs> And you still care enough to call this person a snake and all this other shit. That looks pretty sad. You know, like, I, it, it breaks my heart. <laughs> like, it's so unnecessary. Especially if y'all don't talk anymore. But I think that connection is how it had a, a lasting effect on you. It made you really set boundaries for yourself and other people. You know? Because I feel like you wanted to give so wholeheartedly and there may be an element of like feeling like love has to be um paid for or love has to be um earned you know like you know it, 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 the more I, the more I, I work and the more I, I deliver and give and give and give that means I love you this much right so you're gonna you're gonna make sure that you understand that I love you and you're gonna love me and you know you do the same for me right no they didn't they did not no mm -mm. and and it wasn't at a certain point, you can't even blame them. And not say they weren't wrong. Not to say that they weren't that weren't wrong as fuck. They were. <laughs> Though if they was like over here taking advantage of people. It's saying like in everything you have to take a little bit of accountability in the sense that why did I accept this situation? Why didn't I see the red flags when I well no. Why didn't I pay attention and do something about the red flags that I saw from the beginning? You know, you wouldn't be here if you didn't. But I think the more neutral, because that's more of a negative aspect. I think a more neutral um, situation and how you make people feel on a long-lasting type sense is you make people 
realize what they really want. And it's a weird way of saying that. It's like with that all that earth energy with the queen and the king of pentacles, which is Taurus and Capricorn energy, by the way. It's like you do have a special gift that doesn't even feel like a gift to you. It just feels like natural. It doesn't feel like even like anything special, probably. But you have the gift of seeing other people's potentials. You can see um, where someone could and should strike gold even before they do. And so that's, I think, a root of a lot of your um, conflicts with people. Um, say when you do um, overgive and, and people around you are like, why do you, why do you, why do you just, why do you give so much to this person? You don't see that they don't even give a fuck? Like, you, you may have had friends and family like break it down for you. Like, look, I don't like them. <laughs> I think they're full of shit. Like, it's, it's, it gives me that. And you're like, no, but you just don't understand, though. Like, you just don't see them. Like, I see them. But they don't. They didn't see it either. It's like, I get it. You see the full potential in people because you want to, you, you can tap into their talents and you also want to see the best in people. But it's like, they don't even see it yet. So they can't believe it. Therefore, what you want from this person is basically something that they, they can't give you because they don't believe that that's them. Or they couldn't believe that's them. And, and a long lasting effect in that is maybe figure, you both kind of figure out what you want and what you don't want. Because I guarantee you, if you were um, as loyal as I feel that you were and you walked away from some people or like they walked away from you and they can't come back now, guess what? I think they regret it a lot more than it hurt your feelings. I think they regret it more than it probably hurt your feelings. Because it's funny how you realize um, what's good for you until you don't have it, you know? It's funny how you real thirst out of time when, when, they, when they cut that water off, you know? <laughs> Lord have mercy. And then clarifying that you have two fours. You have the four of swords and the four of cups. Four of cups says, yeah, um, leave me alone. Four of swords says, I'm tired and I don't, don't want to be bothered. I'm not putting any more mental energy in this. When you cut people off, you cut people the fuck off. Even if you're hurt and sad about it, you don't show that shit. You're like, uh-uh. You go bloody. You, you come across like, I don't with you. Like, no more. Like, delete my number. Don't call me no more. Don't text me no more. I'm done. It's like, <laughs> get in the car crying a little bit. Like, I'm gonna miss them. But, like, you you, you don't you don't act like a punk whenever you, uh, <laughs> whenever you um, decide to cut somebody off. And I don't think you go back and forth very often either. It's like, when I'm done, I'm done. Because you had so many different times. So many different chances. So many different opportunities. I get it. I get it. And I think... Also... You both... I think you, you teach people and people kind of teach you the idea of... Avoidance and... How that works in relation to just because you're not acknowledging a problem doesn't mean that the problem doesn't exist just because we refuse to tell ourselves um you know what this isn't working or like i am emotionally drained does not mean that we are in fact not <laughs> drained or not in trouble in our relationship it's like so many times i feel like you are such a person who seeks comfort in all aspects um, that even on a subconscious level, I think you may um, go to crazy lengths to avoid any possibility of feeling really uncomfortable. You know, you don't like to sit with that shit. Um, you don't want to confront that shit if you don't have to. Will I have a better day if I just not acknowledge this? I think so. Let's just take it till we make it. And um, every single time, it always, like clockwork, ended up biting you in the ass. <laughs> You can't run from it, from Ellie. You can't sweep stuff under the rug for so long that, you know, it seeps back out. And so it's just best to just go ahead and bite the bullet and get it over with. So um, I think that's something that goes both ways, though. So I think the lasting effect that you have on people um, in a more positive sense, though, is that you are somebody who is not only grounded and so capable when it comes down to the material you are very empathetic and you are very sensitive y'all are sensitive and so it gave it gave you this gift of 
being able to see what should and could manifest in this reality versus baby what is not gonna happen because it's like you're connected to it from like an emotional place and you're grounded about it and that's your perception that's how you see the world and um i think it's simple to you but it's brilliant to most people brilliant you don't know how brilliant you are and that's one of the things that people say about you um when it's all said and done and how unique you are you are this ace of cups on the bottom of the deck so connected to everyone and everything that not anybody that you've dealt with on um, either platonic level or romantic level forgets you even if they really really want to even if they really fucking want to they can't forget you but that's what I got for you. Sound off in the comments and let me know if this resonated. If it resonated, go subscribe to this channel. Go subscribe to uh, Scarlet uh, Serpent's channel too, you know, my boy. And watch that other video, you know, what are people's first impressions on you? But until next time, guys, if you got spirit, what spirit got you? Uh, blessings, all we do. Bye. Uh, 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 Hi Pile 3 and welcome to your reading. Um, this is, of course, if you missed the intro, a collaboration with myself and Dap, where uh, in this video we're going to look at the lasting impressions that you give towards people, or that people have of you, their lasting impressions. And uh, before I begin, I want to thank Dap for inviting me to his channel and for the idea of this collaboration, because um, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I, I love Dap's energy, so it really is a pleasure to be here and to be working with him. So, I have three cards already for Pile 3. Um, and I'll say that it's the complete opposite uh, energy from a different pile. I won't spoil which one that is, but um, you give off an energy of relaxation, of... Um, blue energy and i have i have three oracle cards so i'm going to show these two now but um your energy is very contagious so first card i have here is divine alchemy with 20 uh, number 24 divine or ascended master mary magdalene and aqua aura quartz and aqua aura stands out because the next card that you have is aura so two cards that sh you know describe aura which is pretty random because <laughs> i don't think any other deck that i have or that there's not that many cards that describe specifically the aura so i don't know if you could read auras that might be something but you um you have a very especially with the alchemy card too um i think you have the ability to deliberately shift the energy of runes and i think um, these people or people who have met you recognize that on a regular basis just through extended exposure to your presence like that they could be having a bad day they'll visit you and then it just completely shifts and that's um, but it could also be depending on who sees you like an ex maybe um, they'll know that if you're in a bad mood that could also really like if you're confused emotionally if you're emotionally confused you'll make sure they feel it too and it'll be very quick and it'll catch someone off guard if they are not that aware of their own energy um and then the next card we have is relax which i think is uh something they see you doing <laughs> again lasting impressions um is that you give off like chill vibes <laughs> um but it can also be that um, you value your own relaxation, you value that time alone, and that's because of, I think, y you might be someone who's more vocal about like psychic practices, and this, of, of course, being one of them, is uh, really cleaning and taking care of your aura, really cleaning and taking care of um, and alchemizing the energies that you deal with on a daily basis. So... Um, 
I guess, long-term friends, or uh, even if, if it's in passing, they'll just notice that you're not afraid to step outside, uh, not afraid to just, like, I need a minute before I go in here or do this. Um, you value your energy, and I think people value your energy as well. So let's look at the tarot and see, I guess, just dig a little deeper as to the lasting impressions that you have. You have the sun. Ten of Cups. So I'll say um, that the, the readings that I did for the lasting impressions were extremely positive. Like, it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's ridiculous how impressionable you are. Um, the Knight of Pentacles. And then do one more card. You know how, uh, well, maybe. I live in, I live in Florida, Dania Beach. If you're visiting, say hello. But, uh, like, when you sleep by the beach and the sun's out, it's kind of like, it'll have you drained for the whole day. Um, and I think, in a way, it's like you give that energy off of being warm, inviting, comfortable, and you'll kind of leave people in sort of a haze, and I think they notice that you, yeah, they treat you with high regard. Let's, let's show you the cards, sorry. Let's have the sun, the ten of cups, very giving, nurturing, life energy giving, life giving. We have the Knight of Pentacles and Queen of Swords, which I'm going to clarify. Because mm. what I'm getting is, despite your demeanor of being relaxed and um, self-aware, I think this is a very spiritual pile, um, spiritual group, but at the same time, you're not afraid <laughs> to defend your energy specifically. Um, but you're not just going to be that passive. It's not like uh, you turn the cheek. Um, and I think maybe uh, some people have realized that about you. Is But not to push it, not to cross your boundaries. Let's get two more cards, though. Because I think uh, lasting impression is that um, people realize how good you are with everyone. Like, you could talk to anyone. You can be friends with anyone. And then I see the Six of Pentacles here, the Nine of Pentacles, so... Um, like I said, with the Divine Alchemy, there's the balancing of the cups, and uh, I think you're just very aware of energy exchange, and... Um, I don't know, it feels like... Mostly, if you have a, a spiritual friend or someone who's more aware, is that they'll just realize how articulate you are, and or I should say, meticulous you are at um, how much time you give to others, how much money you spend on others. So if you're hanging out, you're not always going to treat or something like that. But um, you're not someone who could be taken advantage of. But you're very giving at the same time. Um, Like, you'd be the type of person who, when going out to, like, a, an event or clubbing or drinking or something like that, is you wouldn't leave someone behind. You keep track and tabs of everyone. So, um, if, if, and that, that doesn't only have to be for going out, uh, drinking or something like that. It could be even within a group like a, a work group or at school, um, you account for everyone, you think of everybody, you don't let anyone, um, especially on an emotional level, you, you just want to keep tabs and uh, alchemize any energies that aren't beneficial to the whole, to the collective, whatever collective that might be. So uh, in the house environment, you might be someone who kind of mediates and and uh, brings other people's uh, 
perspective to light because um, you just want things to be balanced and that's a big uh that's a big thing for you and then we also have the star so the sun and the star are very bright energies of leadership of creativity and i mean similar to the other pile that i did for this part of the reading um leaders some you're someone who people can look up to and um try and become in a lot of ways it's I think the biggest lasting impression is that you give people an alternative, you know, um, to, I guess, their friends or their coworkers or other people around them is that you're like a very sharp contrast to most of their friends or their family, um, that success doesn't have to come with uh, at the expense of other people, you know? Yeah. You're sharp, but fair. <laughs> that, that's a big one, yeah. Um, you have a very quick mind, a very quick tongue. You'd be funny, and you could kind of cut to the heart of things, but you do so with... Um, respect to others and um in an honorable way in a way that um like if someone gets a back side or a bad side of you they deserve it <laughs> they deserve it and they'll they'll know that um you're not quick to cut people off because of maybe one bad day or um, um you give people slack in other words uh so if they're not in your life anymore they really don't deserve to be and i think if uh someone ever thinks of you in that in that way it's like why why aren't we friends I'm like oh yeah i messed up because um you're just very respectable a very respectable person so i think i'm gonna end the reading here hopefully you enjoyed it please like and subscribe to dap's channel and don't forget to check out the other part of this reading um on my channel where we look at your first impressions um you enjoyed the reading, and I hope to see you um, in the next reading. Take care. What up, pile number three? And welcome to your read. Hey, looking into what's the last effect that you have on people? I know the build up for just the, how you affect people <laughs> was everything, right? long-term lasting effects so this is like after people get to know you after they've said your energy had time to kind of experience it you know and not just make conclusions or jump to conclusions about it or assumptions about it they, this is how you lead people and not necessarily lead people this is how people um overall feel from you and what they get out of you and i'm, and I'm looking at it more so in terms of a lesson um and by the way don't forget that you gotta watch the other part of this reading, which is what are um, people's first impressions of you over at um, Scarlet uh, Serpent's channel. Make sure to, to uh, subscribe to him as well. To, you know, a little collaboration. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. I do think that y'all could be Sagittarius. Um, Sagittarius kind of heavy. I do see Leo energy um, as well. You could be a life path number eight, definitely maybe an August Leo if you are Leo. Um, and I'm also seeing something about Aquarius energy, Aquarius energy, maybe Scorpio, but let's just get into it. So I feel like, at least right now, the, the lasting effects that you have on people is, I think your ability to um, shift from say something that could be so toxic or so um, so easily discredited by other people or looked down upon or something. Like say, is, okay, for example, for if you were say um, when you're younger, hang around the wrong crowd, like just just hung around the wrong crowd. Like you weren't necessarily a bad person. Not saying any of those people were bad people, but it's like you you put these 
people together in this situation and in this environment, you got a recipe for disaster. It's like saying you may have been one of them kind of situations. You could have also been somebody who um, maybe instead of dealing with your problems, you may drink your problems or smoke your problems away um, and did that with the wrong crowd. And, it, and But the thing is, I, if that is your story, 100%, I feel like you definitely got yourself out of it. Um, or at least distance yourself from it in, in, in such a way that people see you as, um, mm, this person is, is, wow, a testament, like strong as hell. And they probably don't give you enough credit uh, for that either. Um, they probably don't give you enough credit for that either. Or you don't give yourself enough credit. Because I'm seeing somebody who did damn near the impossible something that's like really hard to do like break away from it's like it was so ingrained in you whatever that this was and i think it even triggered a whole spiritual awakening or something um because we do have the lessons that you bring people like the whole lasting effect is this idea of um spiritual partnerships 27 and this could have happened um or started for y'all at the age of 27 because um, 27 for me is also, you, I'm, I'm sure you may have heard of um, the 27 Club, like the, where say a celebrity turns 27 and they overdose normally, right? Um, 27 is actually the, the, the year for most people um, when they're starting their Saturn return. Like when Saturn goes all the way back to the placement where it was, where you were born, my friend. And it, and it only does that every 27 years, it's 27 to 30 years. So if you're older than say like um, 26, you may know what the fuck I'm talking about. You may be thinking about, yeah, when I was like 27, shit was real hard. Like, oh my God. And you know, and you may not have known anything about um, <laughs> what a, a, a Saturn return is or whatever. Um, heads up, if you're not um, yet, you know, this in this stage of your 20s, like if you're younger than that, I knew what a Saturn return was when I, was, I think I was about 25. I was expecting this to come in. My guides were like, I didn't even know what a guide was. But they was like, let's just slip this into, you know, his, his consciousness. Know that 27 is going to be pretty rough, sir. Like, you got a strong ass uh, Saturn placement. And it's because my Saturn's in the 29th degree. I don't know if you know anything about astrology. But if you know what I'm talking about, uh, my Saturn's in the 29th degree. Uh, the anorectic degree. So it was hard for me, okay? Like, the shit. Yeah. So when I'm talking about this major transformation and maybe happening around 27 in your spiritual career, that's something I relate to because I think that happened. I, I didn't know I was telling my story, but like that that happened to me. And um, so if you're relating to this, and especially if you're younger, I knew about the Saturn return, but that did not. <laughs> so what? I swear to God, it was still hard. It was still hard. I'm like, oh my God, yep, Saturn return, it sucks. Yeah, I, like I, I thought I was going to be able to, you know... <laughs> finesse my way around this one but no and it's just because it's, it's, it's important the whole reason of like a hard time during your sudden return is if you're not if you're not balanced because i was not balanced i was not i was bullshitting i was not doing anything that was along my path it's like saying saturn is gonna come to you at 27 years old and ask you hey bitch what you doing is this sustainable is this is this is this gonna get you anywhere is this is this even worth your time because Saturn does represent time the clock is ticking we got stuff to do um and it and if you're not on your path um by then you're kind of nudged into it by like a tower moment usually and I, that's what I think happened to you so it's like you have temperance in reverse that comes up with a Sagittarius energy of um of being imbalanced a lot of times for um, me it's the card of say overindulgences and addictions and just going too fucking far um, think about your 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 wildest Sagittarius friend, um, but imagine that friend during a psychotic break. That is temperature in reverse. It's just doing the most, um, and not afraid of shit. To the point where it's obvious to you and everyone else that this is toxic, but you but it has a hold on you. You know, like this is scary toxic, but it has a hold on you. So people saw you as um, somebody who at some point have been in that place of, of, of darkness to the point where like, I know my life is real, 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 like real, real, real sideways right now. Or like it, it has the potential to get real sideways, but I, I, I can't move the hangman. I cannot move. Mm. 
and the two of pentacles because whatever that situation is it probably started off with you um being able to play these two parts of yourself and that's another thing that people got out of you like you know you, you teach people the lesson of what you see is not ever normally what you're gonna get in this in a sense it's like the way we act around certain people is gonna change and i think most people know that on a like conscious level but we don't really think about it it's like they saw it in you it's like damn this person can flip the switch and just be somebody else put that part of myself back in a box we don't uncover her when we're over here it's like you're basically living almost like a double life and so you and when you do that it's it's, it's easy for you to not pay attention or to um to get yourself in a position where you feel like oh my god life i've, I've dug myself too deep but i can't get out because you're so ingrained in that routine as part of like your habits and who you are that's that's the scary part it was it was starting to become part of who you are um this idea that i can put myself in split myself and be this version of myself which is like not just in a way that's like you know how you present yourself like say how you talk to your friends versus how you talk to your boss not like that but like you, a whole different personality to hide whatever you whatever you're doing um say on the side and vice versa like we didn't mix those at all she said we didn't mix them two. We didn't mix them two lives at all, and well, it came back. You know, they say there's only three things, three things that just cannot seem to stay hidden for long. That is what the sun, the moon, and the motherfucking truth. Somebody said that. I don't. Know who, I'm quoting somebody. I didn't come up with that, but like, it's a vibe. <laughs> You can't run from yourself for too long. You damn sure can't run from the truth. So 27 may have taught you that, but where a lot of people would have failed over and over and over again, I think you found freedom. I possess the power and the free will to create my own happiness. And boom. So we have a spiritual awakening. And, um... I think it pissed a lot of people off with the three pinnacles in reverse. I think, um, say, just that energy of you being able to shift. Because like that, the other part, the first part doesn't resonate with you. I'm not saying it's the only, that, that's the only thing that's really going to be about. Because, you know, this is a general reading girl. Like, you know, put yourself where you fit in. Take your, take your message, you know, leave with the. But no, really, though. Um, another way to interpret that is just like saying you could have crafted these identities about yourself or told yourself these stories of who you are just to turn around and be like no nah, and go completely left and and shock everybody and we didn't even see it coming who is this like you show people that you don't you don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and be miserable about it you know what i'm saying it's like you you, you remind people that we do have um, all of the freedom and free choice and free will to do what we need to do in this life that that resonates with us without apologizing to nobody. If we ain't hurting nobody, I'm not sorry about it. This is who I am. Um, but you lost all support, is what I'm trying to say with the Three of Pentacles in reverse. You you end up losing, like, say, a lot of support that you think you lost support. I don't think those people were really supportive, like, genuinely, but you felt like you lost a lot of support. And it also speaks of group conflict. You may have had a lot in, in this experience, may have actually um, been involving coworkers or something like that as well, or work could have gotten involved as well. Um, or you may just be the type of person that really bonds well with work with people at work, especially working like a restaurant or something like that. You, some of your best friends may be coming from work. And maybe you shifted out of that. Because I do know one thing about restaurant culture is that, uh, and I worked at a restaurant for 15 years, 15 years for doing this. Um, it's cool. whether you work at Chili's or the Cheesecake Factory, the shit is literally toxic <laughs> work environment. It's like, especially if you are somebody who's prone to overindulgence, because I mean, like, it's just, it, it's, I ain't gonna go too deep into it, but like, working in a restaurant for a lot of people is like, you're just surrounded by like addicts and <laughs> alcoholics and people who are perpetually. Um, partying all the time like you get off work just to go to the bar to spend all the hundred, little hundred dollars you done made um, just to get up and be back at work at four o'clock to do it all over again you know it's like <laughs> it's interesting quick fast money but it comes with a lot no matter how fancy the place is and this is for y'all who don't 
who has never worked in a restaurant like as a server or bar like a sit down place no ma no, it doesn't matter how fancy the place is <laughs> no your servers in the background are toxic as fuck okay it's toxic <laughs> it is this is what it is but um that was a random side though I'm, I'm so sorry but also the thing that you um that you, that you give to people or people take from you like in the long run like how you affect them is this idea of um boundaries i think you really had to set some strong ass motherfucking boundaries for yourself and that in turn had you set some stronger boundaries for the people around you no longer am i putting up or tolerating with the bullshit because my life is too valuable my life is too valuable the seven of wands comes up you started protecting your energy and I think some people, believe it or not, you may not ever, ever know this. You, you may not, they may not ever tell you. You may never find yourself in a position where they can't even tell you. But some people actually watched what you did and um, were inspired enough about it to do something similar. Like, maybe I should put up some boundaries too. Like, God damn it, I don't, I don't like that shit neither. <laughs> I don't want to be like this either. Like, I think you inspire some people. We also have the four pentacles in reverse, knowing when to say, hell no. <laughs> Not just no, but hell no. And that also inspires people. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> so telling people, so basically, this is how you affect people, <laughs> pile number three, telling people to back the fuck up. <laughs> and hell no, it's, 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 the, it's the positive. I can see that. I can see that. It's all about how you take it. It's not being mean, it's just being real as fuck. It's like, look. Look, 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 listen, listen, Sess, I can't, <laughs> I'm not, I, I could, but I'm not, because, come on, let's not, let's not, let's not degrade both of us here, let's not, mm -mm, I'm not doing that anymore, you grew up, it's amazing how you grew up, because that two, that two and the seven with the spiritual partnership is, for me, I think you went through a spiritual awakening, you found your higher self, that partnership was with you and your higher self and your guides, you may have found some spiritual people too, but it's mainly about you reconnecting with your soul, and um, also two and seven, that's nine, so you may definitely be a life path number nine. Um, the number nine also represents com um, completion, but in this sense, I think it's wisdom. It's completion is in the sense of like you um, saying goodbye to one thing, one one very familiar phase of life that you didn't know how was gonna like how you were gonna ever get out of, or how, how how would you even change, or like how would you even do anything other than this to like so much wisdom, a mouthpiece for the kids, you know, like somebody to look up to. And if you don't feel like you're any of those things and you're still in that situation, guess what? This was your future reading. Do it. Get out. Get up. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention, pay attention. Uh, I want to watch Sister Act, but that's all I got for y'all. I'm good. I'm gone. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But just do me a favor though, sound off in the comments, let me know how this resonated. If this resonated, say hey to my boy, Scarlet Serpent, and go subscribe to him. Subscribe to him right now. Go. And watch the other reading that's, um, that the, the, the part one or two, I don't know if it's part one or part two. The other part to this, which is how you affect people um, in the beginning, I guess, you know, initially. First impressions, all this is gonna be linked. But um, remember, if you got spirit, what spirit got you up, blessings? Oh, we do. Bye. Da, 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 da.